Now, welcome back. So we're turning to look at the weekend's hurling. We have James e. O'Connor on the line and Dennis Walsh from the Sunday Times with us as well. You're there, lads? Yeah. Hi, yeah, Joe. Great to have you with us. So Kilkenny 227, Cork 318. Kilkenny will face Limerick on July 27th in the first All-Ireland semi-final of that weekend. And then Tip beat Leash 225 to 118. They will face Wexford on Sunday, July 28th. We'll start with the Kilkenny Cork game, Dennis. A lot of people in the build-up said Cork were a Crow Park team. We're going to have to stop saying that, really. One out of nine matches won in that stadium. You have to go back 2013 semi-final against Dublin, that last win. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure they're a Crow Park team. No, um, but Joe, they, you know they've they failed. They failed at, at other venues this year as well. Mm. Um, you know they were very poor against Tip, very poor against Tip and Brocky Keeve in the first game. Very poor against Clare and Ennis. So, you know, I think the issues that Cork have um, are far greater than a venue or or a perceived difficulty with a venue. Um, but actually, sorry, I was getting at the fact that I read a lot of previews in the build-up to the game and a lot of people very informed were saying they reckoned that Crow Park would suit this Cork team, that Cork yeah. were actually going to do well at Crow Park and, yeah, and, and even uh, that deserted them. Sure, and like I assume that would be you know linked to the pace that they have in the forward line and you know the skill levels that they would, that, that people would, would perceive them to have. And you know they played very well for an hour in Crow Park against Limerick last year. Mm. Didn't play very well against Warford the year before in, in, in the semi-final. I mean, they have had some, some dismal performances in Crow Park. I mean, the, the 2014 semi-final was a complete disaster, but um, as I said to you, I think there's much more fundamental stuff going on, Joe. To be honest, and yeah. I mean that performance yesterday was uh, was you know was good in parts in the first half when Cork probably should have could have certainly have have put the game um, beyond Kenny's reach. But I mean the third quarter was dysfunctional, and you know Cork have had periods like that this summer when they had just been dysfunctional. And um, you know when you've when you put three of those together into the same championship, it's just not acceptable, and you know this team is un- this team is underperforming. They have underachieved. Um, they won two game of the championships the last two years. weren't able to convert those. Uh, wasn't able to convert that momentum in Crow Park, uh, and I think now they've you know they've reached a serious crossroads now where something something has to give. Yeah, Jamesy, they were wasteful in the first half. Like they had their moments in the first half. There's no doubt, and they only went in two points up. And you sensed there could be trouble for them in the second half once Cody got to sit down with the Kilkenny team and try and get something out of them. If you're to pick apart the Cork failings, Jamesy, what are they exactly? Well, I think obviously defensively, I mean, you know, I think Henry said in his preview in the Sunday Times, I think yesterday, that he couldn't just see where, where Kilkenny were, were going to get the scores from, mm. given that Cork invariably, you know, the Cork forwards regularly hits, you know, 25 to, to, to 30 points. I mean, they, they put what, 318, 27 points on the board yesterday. Yeah. Um, but you can concede the tally that they did to tip, for example, in the first round of the championship in two twenty seven yesterday. Um and expect now to, to you know to win the really big matches. Um on top of that, then it's listen that the, there was a serious malfunction on their own puck out and, and, and the third quarter, I mean they were you know, at half time, as I said, look at okay, there's a finite amount of chances that you get in the game and you felt that maybe they were going to rue not taking some of those. But you still felt that listen, you know, Horgan was on fire, Cadigan was on fire as well, mm. and Kenny couldn't handle those guys and mm. they could get enough ball into them. Um, you know, they did have enough firepower to win the to win the match. But as I said, defensively, you know, shipping two twenty seven and that third quarter fade out um is inexplicable. And I suppose really it comes down to, you know, Kilkenny turning it into a dog fight, um, you know, putting plenty of bodies across the middle third and saying, Right, lads, we're going to make it hurt for you, you know, win your own ball and Cork simply weren't able to do that and weren't able to get enough ball into into Cadigan and Hogan inside and it's it's just a pity for those two guys that they played so well. Um, I mean, they were on fire yesterday, and 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 Cork couldn't get it done, and it's it's bitter disappointing because, you know, I thought that you know, given the disappointment of last year, I mean, they were so close, you know, they they practically had one foot in the final. I mean, mm. six points up, whatever, which, you know, with, with six or seven minutes left, um, I thought that there'd be a burning desire there yesterday not to let this one slip and to, you know, to go a step further and get another crack at Limerick in the semi final, and that must be what's I suppose, frustrating and baffling from a Cork perspective that. Mm. You know the team just didn't perform on on the biggest stage, and, and I suppose really, you know, Kilkenny could have won by more if Horgan hadn't got that fantastic third goal to to give them a life on at the end. James, here we're going to a point where a fairly kind of a well ensconced one where the uh, Munster Championship is full of great aesthetics and brilliant score taking, and there's a vibrancy to the matches, and that Leinster doesn't quite have that, but it has an intensity, and maybe we saw that manifest yesterday between the two sides. Yeah, I think that's a valid point because certainly there was an intensity and in, and in, in physicality in Leinster. And I suppose, you know, Pernell Park obviously is a is, is a tight grounds. Um, you know, Wexford Park and Salt Hill then are, are both on the sea, and often it's 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 attritional in the sense that you know you're 
you're playing into a st- strong breeze in one half, and you're you know you're you're with the storm at, at, at the other. And you know the game certainly in Leinster, and um, you know we're more physical. They seem to be more open and maybe more free flowing in in Munster. But listen, Kilkenny were were battle hardened coming into coming into yesterday, and I, I still thought that you know Kilkenny wouldn't be good enough. They haven't been able to get a Cody, haven't been able to get his best 15 on the field all year. You know, Buckley been injured and Richie Hogan hadn't been available. Mm. Walter Walsh hadn't been, you know, fit for, I suppose, really a, a, operate at the level that he normally he normally does. But there's validity to that, um, certainly, Joe, because, you know, Kilkenny, Kilkenny were everybody's fit as Cork. Um, and when it came down to a dogfight, um, you know, they were the ones winning the 50 50 contest and, and monopolising possession. And as I said, they, they won that game in the third quarter. I mean, Cork got a point. And, and whatever, nearly 20 minutes of hurling, and that's not acceptable and not going to get it done at this level. Well, to extend that point, Dennis, I might put to you what Anthony Daly said in the Irish Examiner. And he said, I don't like questioning the character of players when I know how much they put into it. But you have to ask serious questions of the manliness of some of the players with the way in which some of them collapsed. A couple of them, big names too, didn't want to know about it when Kilkenny brought them into the trenches, as we all knew Kilkenny would. And then he talked about the rook ball. I don't like using the term rook ball, especially when it's a term borrowed from a game with an oval ball. But Kilkenny just ate Cork alive on the ground. Cork fellas just standing up. For the first 20 minutes of the second half, some of them didn't want to know about it full stop. And James used the word desire as well. That must be nagging at Cork fans this morning. Oh, absolutely, Joe. I mean, um, look, Cork suffered a lot at the hands of Kilkenny between 2008 and 2012 when Cork had a much inferior team and you know Kilkenny were the greatest team of all time and you know uh, that Kilkenny team was the greatest team of all time and you know to hammer Cork in two other and finals destroy Cork in a league final and then you know 2013 Cork beat them in, 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 the, in Thurlis and you know Cork since then Cork had been at various times looked like a team that could win in all Ireland and this is not this, this Kilkenny team bears no resemblance to, to, to the great Kilkenny teams. But what's so powerful about them and what's so powerful about what they brought yesterday is the cultural stuff, the culture of Nolan Park, the culture of Cody's values mm. that everybody absolutely has to, um, you know, um, aspire to and, and, and perform to. And like yesterday, it was all about the fundamental stuff. It was all about, as you say, desire, intensity. No, that intensity wasn't there in the first half. I mean, it, I mean Cork... At, at times in the first half, Cork ran a drag with Kilkenny, and they would they opened up space. And you know, it, I mean, I was amazed that you know how they allowed Seamus Harney win three or four puck outs easily. You know, when he was just making a simple run off the D, and there was space in front of him, and they didn't shut that space down. That was very un Kilkenny like. Mm. But once they shut once they shut that space down, and once they shut down Cork in the air, and that was a big thing. I mean, a, a huge thing with Kilkenny in, in the Cody era has been their aerial dominance. That has faded in recent years, but mm. that was, that's what killed Cork yesterday. Cork are a team that are weak in the air. They have only one plausible target in the forward line. Yesterday, Kilkenny dictated Cork puck outs because they said to Cork, we're happy for you to give the ball to Sean Donoghue, mm. and then we'll take it from there. Mm. So they absolutely they, they dictated Cork's puck outs, and Cork did not have alternatives. And for Cork to come to Cork Park without plans, a, B, C, D and E for puck out yeah. is just not acceptable. And, you know, they were cleaned out in the air. when Once Harrity was closed down, they were cleaned out in the air. And that's the kind of bread and butter, fundamental stuff that mm. Kenny do so well. You know, they, as, as, as James said, they turned the game in, into a war in the third quarter. And that just doesn't suit this Cork team. And that's, that's a real stain on their character. Yeah, third quarter, Kilkenny won a period of the third quarter, 1-8 to a single point. Um, and it's especially damning I mean, that, that puck out situation, Dennis, when you think that Davy and Wexford decided that they were just going to pump it long down the guts of Kilkenny and that they could take them on there, that Cork yeah. couldn't compete whatsoever is very worrying. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Wexford are, are a different make and model uh, in sure. terms of they have, they have puck out targets, they have powerful guys in attack, they have guys who are good in the air. Um, but, I mean, Cork just don't have that. And mm. like, that's been an issue. Like when Harnley came onto, when Harnley broke onto the team, there was a real kind of relief that here we have a guy, I mean, going back to the years with Niall McCarthy, who was brave in the air, was able to, you know, get to the ball, and, and, if, and if not win it cleanly, at least break it. Mm. And, but when you only have one plausible target, and everyone knows that you only have one plausible target mm. for a ball like that, for a contested ball. But I mean, in the modern game, Joe, so, so many puck outs and so many restarts, you're trying to create situations that are not contested or that are 60-40 in your favour. And, you know, Limerick do that brilliantly. And, you know, Nicky Quaid is, is, is terrific at it. But yesterday, if you're, in, if you're in the stadium and you're looking, you know, Nash was there with the, with the ball looking to make a restart and you look around the field and what are his options and you knew his options were so limited. And 
it wasn't by I'm, I'm sure Anthony Nash did not want to give so many, so many puck outs to John Donahue but he just had no choice mm. and what's the feeling on John Myler's future Dennis uh, that's going to come under serious pressure Joe there's no two ways about that I mean he's been in the job now two years uh, it's no secret that he wasn't the first choice it's no secret that the players would have preferred somebody else two years ago um, depending on depending on which source you believe he was the third, fourth or fifth choice no he got the job he would have been seen as somebody that Frank Murphy had a lot of time for over the years. Frank Murphy would have, would have been a big influence on him getting the Cochrane 21 job a couple of years ago. Like he, was a, he was a selector with the seniors before he, got, before he got the job because they had this overlap. He was the on, the on, the on, the on manager, uh, so he was a senior selector as well. And he did well with the on-21s. Um, he was always going to get it when, when their first two or three targets didn't want it. He's been around the scene an awful long time. Um, he was involved with, the cop, with a cop minor team 20 years ago that won in All Ireland. I think there'll be a real push for change. I heard Tracy Kennedy, the Cork County Board chairperson, interviewed on local radio after the match yesterday, and she was saying, "Look, it's, it's obviously the end of a two-year term. There'll be a review, uh, you know, as normal, and they'll go through the process." I expect that there'll be a real clamour for change, which might necessarily happen. And that, you know, Cork are not falling down with options in terms of alternatives. You know, have we reached? Have has the Cork County Board uh, and the Cork establishment reached a point where they can say, "Lads, park the strikes and give the job to Don Low Cusick"? I'm not sure they've reached that point. I mean, it, it's absolutely crazy that you know, if if it's the case that they haven't in their own minds reached crossed that threshold, it's absolutely you know, it's 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 really damaging for Cork. But he's the obvious, he's the obvious candidate, and I think he would, he, and I think he would bring in good guys around him. And I really think it is now, well, it, you know, with with um, so many of the old guard on the county board um, moving on, that it really is time to move on from the Cork strikes and give the and give the job to a modern, progressive coach, someone like Don Cusick, who can bring real energy to the whole thing. And I presume the strikes were the reason that none of that 04, 05 generation have taken the job in the meantime. Well, it's certainly a factor. I mean, look, obviously, Jim uh, O'Sullivan was in. Jim O'Sullivan was in there as a selector. Um, uh, Kieran Fraggy Murphy who was involved this year or the last couple of years as a coach. I mean, he would have been involved with, with that generation of players, uh, not necessarily on that side of the strike. But uh, look, the players themselves, they've all put that, they've all put that so far behind them. Yeah. But it's just hanging around. It's hanging around. I mean, the third strike, especially Joe, was so poisonous. Mm. And there was just that overhang. There was just that pollution still in the system. I mean, this is nearly 10 years ago since the last strike. But, you know, why else, why else would Don Logue not be given the job? Mm. Yeah, I guess those of us on the outside, the, the third strike, the Gerald McCarthy one, feels like a million years ago, but maybe in the county, it sure doesn't. So uh, it's interesting to get that take. On um, Kilkenny, James, TJ Reid scored 10 points, but all of them for freeze. They had 12 different scores. They had six points off the bench. Richie Hogan back, you know, scoring a goal. Didn't finish the game. You presume he's just short in match fitness, but you kind of hope, and certainly from a Kilkenny point of view, he's going to kick on. So Kilkenny will retreat to the confines of Nolan Park and be thinking about Limerick and looking forward to Limerick. Who are Limerick's biggest threat in the championship of Kilkenny, Tipperary and Wexford remaining? I think the biggest threat to Limerick is the one that's, that's right in front of him now, and that's, and that's Kilkenny. And I think John Kiley would have probably preferred to to have Cork in a fortnight's time given that you know they, they like, obviously they lost to Cork during the league and, and, and they lost to Cork in the first round and therefore Limerick would probably feel there was time for a bit of payback um, and people even question him maybe that you know it was down to Nicky Quaid's late intervention and you know Cork could have won the game and all the rest of it so Kilkenny were a different proposition and you know the, the one of the reasons why I felt Cork would, would, would win is because Kilkenny simply haven't been able to get this at their best 15 players on the on the field. You know, Killian Buckley has been unavailable. And but from a Kilkenny perspective, Joe, I mean, you know, to get Richie Hogan back on the field and looking like Richie Hogan again. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously the, you know, the the goal after half time was was a huge score. And and sometimes as well, it's not so much even the goal; it's who gets the goal. Yeah. And um, and that had to give a massive shot in the arm to the to the rest of the Kilkenny the Kilkenny players. And Richie didn't look too happy when he was when he was replaced <laughs> after it was a 45 50, 50 minutes and. And if 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 he can stay injury free, I mean he's he's a class player. He's you know he he just like all good players seems to have a little bit of extra time on the on the ball and be a huge boost to have him and Walter back fully fit as well. I mean Walter got three points off the bench and they got six on the bench, Joe, which was a, yeah. a, a, a you know a big contribution. And Buckley, you know again like you just feel that if they can get Buckley and get Parik Walsh 
back into maybe that half back line. Um, you know, suddenly it's 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 a more formidable Kilkenny Kilkenny outfit. So, I mean, Limerick will have to you know jump the next fence before they can contemplate the, the All Ireland. And, and obviously, that sense at the moment is is, is is Kilkenny. And like it took two savage Tom Arcy points later on Joe last year. And Kilkenny feeling aggrieved about a I think a foul on John Donnelly that was or wasn't. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like Cody will Cody will go back and 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 look at analyze Limerick and 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 Kilkenny will still feel that it's on their day. You know, if they can, if their big players perform, um, you know, they can give Limerick lots of uh, lots of trouble. And um, you know, for me, as I said, and from from a neutral perspective, this this is going to be a crack in the yeah. hardest time. Yeah, no, it's going to be some weekend. I mean, last year it was phenomenal. If we get even something half as good, we'll be just fine. Tipperary will play Wexford again. That's a quintessential Munster against Leinster tie. If we're talking about it in these kind of terms it's difficult to know what to take from the leash game because I look obviously and leash uh, good on them and they finished things off in a brilliant way and they deserved that lap of honor and it was a very uh, dignified impressive good way to to sign off but if we're looking at Tipperary for a second here lads like it was kind of lose lose in a way like by whatever mar- margin they won but nobody felt it was a particularly good showing and I'm wondering Dennis you know how much you read into it because I saw even Jackie Tyrrell last night in the Sunday game making the point that the likes of uh, Flynn and Kyle Barrett were out around mid- at the middle third a bit and that really is in preparation for Wexford that, that, that is in the probably uh, good knowledge that they'll be dragged out around that part of the field against Wexford. So it wasn't necessarily a tactic to maximise the performance against Leash. So you're, you're trying to judge them uh, through that um, vantage point. Uh, that said, nobody felt it was a great temporary performance. So the, 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 there was a kind of a rhythm about them. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, like, look, for the first four or five weeks of the summer, Joe, like, they were the most impressive team any of us. So, mm. and there was a terrific energy and pace and you know, creativity to what they were doing, and you know, everyone could see the Eamon O'Shea uh, mark, and obviously, and, and also Tommy Dunn, who's a, who's a hugely respected mm. coach on the scene. And um, the Munster final must have knocked an awful hole in them. I mean, they, they were just torn apart that day. And I think, look, I think we all expected a bit more yesterday, definitely, and I'm sure Tiberi expected a bit more. But maybe it's not so simple just to come back from the performance that they had in the Munster final. Uh, to, to a game that everyone knew they were going to win, and you know whatever, whatever, whatever they tried last week to convince themselves that there was a threat of losing, you know they couldn't possibly have have convinced themselves that there was a threat of losing, really. Mm. And um, you know uh, you can be politically correct about these things, but that's the reality. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so uh, look, it's going to be uh, look that actually that game is going to be there's going to be such a contest, such a contrast in styles as you say, Joe, in two weeks' time. And Wexford are going to bring such such you know such confidence now, and you know they've 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 cracked it in Crow Park, which they hadn't done for an awful long time. I mean, they hadn't they hadn't won a, a big game in Crow Park since you know the, in the middle of the last decade. So mm. that must be huge for them as well. And they won't. I don't think they will bring any any fear. I mean, this is a this is a. I mean, when the draw was panning out the way it was over the last couple of weeks, and people were saying to Bury must beat Leash and Wexford to each other in the final, everyone said it's made for them. I don't believe it's made for them. I think that game is 50-50. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, it's hard to think of a team's uh, stock flying so high at the start of the year and going so low, Jamesy Tip. Um, the performance not great. I was half thinking of... Uh, uh, Podrick Harrington sometimes talks about this, that there are certain golfers who get in the hunt for a major and uh, they lose, and it's such a kind of... Uh, horrible experience for them. They don't necessarily want to go near winning a major again. You half wonder in some respects if that um, defeat in the Munster final was just so resounding that Tipperary almost know that Limerick have them. You, 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 I don't know. You just wonder how much they want to get back there and face uh, Limerick in an All Ireland final again, as much as they'll say they will. Yeah, well, I think they probably didn't see the Munster final coming um, in terms of the performance that Limerick brought and in terms of the gulf between the between the two sides. But better to get that hide and then Joe and learn, you know, find out those those deficiencies and and, and be able to address them. Then you know, I guess what I'm sort get, of getting the haymaker yeah, in the final. You know? I guess so, what I'm sort of asking in a clumsier way is, can it, and you know, from your own experience, has a defeat ever been so resounding that it just kind of knocked your, the stuff nearly completely for the season and you were done and you knew deep down you were done. Um, possibly, yeah, but yeah, certainly, I mean, this 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 this. this you know, so a, a lot of my career, my early part of my career, you know, no back door. That was, yeah. that was that, that 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 was it. Um, you know, obviously it's different now in terms of the round, um, in terms of the round robin. But there's no doubt about it. I mean, 
Kilkenny over the years, I mean, um, you know, particularly when they're in their pomp, I mean, it was it was about inflicting absolute maximum psychological damage. And there was an element, I think, of of Limerick doing that to Tip, um, you know, in the Munster, in the Munster final. But yeah. I still think that, you know, Sheedy, you know, Tommy Donaim and O'Shea, like that, that backroom team, you know, there'll be plenty of time gone into, you know, identifying, okay, where it went wrong and how it can be, how it can be fixed. Mm. And, um, and I still give them, you know, credit in terms of, you know, the, the, the faith they have in the players and the talent that's there, and particularly the, 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 the talent up front. And that's not to say that they're perfect. And, you know, sometimes as well, you know, the loss of Bonner is, is another psychological blow to mm. throw into the mix because mm. he's such an important player. And, and, you know, he was in such fantastic form, form that we hadn't seen in, in, in probably five or six years from him. So, you know, you, you've got to factor in that as well. But, you know, Tip would still feel that, listen, they have nothing to fear from Wexler. Now, you know, Davy and Wexler saw nothing to fear from Tipperary yesterday and certainly Limerick blew a hole as well in, in that aura of invincibility in, 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 in the Munster final. So as Dennis said, like, this is, this is not the foregone conclusion or, the, or it's, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a 50-50 game and the game, you know, the, the Munster final was very, very much after 15, 20 minutes played on Limerick's terms and, you know, you even get the sense in, in, in some of those Wexford and Kenny matches as well that Wexford have been able to drag Kilkenny into playing the game on their terms, um, rather rather than Kilkenny's, and that's going to be the key for Tip. That you know they they they, they don't get dragged into a, a game as said that where Wexford did take in the terms of engagement, and you know Tip will still feel though I think um, Joe that look at they have they have the talent, they've got the smarts mm. um, in the backroom team to figure it to figure it out, and and if they get ahead. You know, and 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 get five or six points ahead of Wexford. You know, but then it's a different story, and you you know you wonder will Wexford be able to be, be, be able to claw it back? And that's that that's for me going to be the going to be the key. But um, but certainly, you know, there was I, I felt and I believe that you know there would be three monster teams in the semi final, and that theory was fairly well blown up, um, in smoke at the weekend. And certainly, you know, any perceptions there might have been that there's a gap between Munster and Leinster were were pretty pretty much blown away. And okay, Limerick may still be if they play. The eleven the monster final better than everybody else, but probably not by the margins that maybe we believe was was, was the case. Yeah. You know, before that monster final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The monster boys always had notions anyway. Should we knew that? <laughs> uh, James O'Connor, thanks a million. Dennis Walton, Sunday Times. Cheers. You're welcome. Cheers, Joe.